Good morning, everyone. Um, hopefully at this point you have seen the video for our week two PowerPoint. Uh, if you can't remember where that is, it'll be under this tab here once it's uploaded. Uh, that'll walk you through the PowerPoint. Some of those slides you cannot complete until after you read the story, which is why you can always just pause the video and then come back to it at any time, okay? Um, shouldn't be too bad if you do this all at once. It would should be no more than 45 minutes. But let's go ahead and look. Uh, so for your PowerPoint presentation to access it, you'll click here for week two. You'll click here and you'll sign in through your Google account with the school. That is where you will have access to the PowerPoint and be able to complete the lessons, okay? So this video will be a recording of the reading for 11 by Sandra Cisneros. So if you click on this tab, if you click here, we'll open up a PDF file of the story. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read it. So feel free to follow along. If that's um, something that you think will benefit you, please Feel free to just have it up while I read it, or you can read it by yourself. It's up to you, uh, but I'll go over it and then we'll discuss it together, okay? All right, 11 by Sandra Cisneros. What they don't understand about birthdays and what they never tell you is that when you're 11, you're also 10 and nine and eight and seven and six and five and four and three and two and one. And when you wake up on your 11th birthday, you expect to feel 11, but you don't. You open your eyes and everything's just like yesterday, only it's today. And you don't feel 11 at all. You feel like you're still 10, and you are, underneath the year that makes you 11. Like some days, you may say something stupid, and that's the part of you that's still 10. Or maybe some days you might need to sit on your mama's lap because you're scared, and that's the part of you that's five. And maybe one day when you're all grown up, maybe you will need to cry like if you're three, and that's okay. That's what I tell mama when she's sad and needs to cry. Maybe she's feeling three. Because the way you grow old is kind of like an onion or like the rings inside of a tree trunk, or like my little wooden dolls that fit one inside the other, each year inside the next one. That's how being 11 years old is. You don't feel 11, not right away. It takes a few days, weeks, even sometimes even months before you say 11 when they ask you. And you don't feel smart 11, not until you're almost 12. That's the way it is. When only today I wish I didn't have only 11 years rattling inside me like pennies in a tin band-aid box. Today I wish I was 102 instead of 11. Because if I was 102, I'd have known what to say when Miss Price put the red sweater on my desk. I would have known how to tell her it wasn't mine instead of just sitting there with the look on my face and nothing coming out of my mouth. Whose is this? Miss Price says, and she holds the red sweater up in the air for all the class to see. Whose? It's been sitting in the coat room for a month. Not me, not mine, says everybody. Not me. It has to belong to somebody, Miss Price keeps saying, but nobody can remember. It's an ugly sweater with red plastic buttons and a collar and sleeves all stretched out like you could use it for a jump rope. It's maybe a thousand years old, and even if it belonged to me, I wouldn't say so. Maybe because I'm skinny, maybe because she doesn't like me, that stupid Sylvia Saldiva says, I think it belongs to Rachel. An ugly sweater like that, all raggedy and old, but Miss Price believes her. Miss Price takes the sweater and puts it right on my desk. But when I open my mouth, nothing comes out. 
that's not. I don't. You're not. Not mine. I finally say in a little voice. That was maybe me when I was four. Of course it's yours, Miss Price says. I remember you wearing it once. Because she's older and the teacher, she's right, and I'm not. Not mine, not mine, not mine. But Miss Price is already turning to page 32 and math problem number four. I don't know why, but all of a sudden I'm feeling sick inside. Like the part of me that's three wants to come out of my eyes. Only I squeeze them shut tight and I bite down on my teeth real hard and try to remember today I'm 11. 11. Mama is baking a cake for me tonight and when Papa comes home, everybody will sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. But when the sick feeling goes away and I open my eyes, the red sweater is still sitting there like a big red mountain. I move the red sweater to the corner of my desk with my ruler. I move my pencil and books and eraser as far from it as possible. I even move my chair a little to the right. Not mine, not mine, not mine. In my head, I'm thinking how long till lunchtime? How long till I can take the red sweater and throw it over the schoolyard fence? Or leave it hanging in a parking meter? Or bunch it up into a little ball and toss it in the alley? Except when math period ends, Miss Price says loud and in front of everybody, Now, Rachel, that's enough. Because she sees I've shoved the red sweater into the tippy tip corner of my desk and it's hanging all over the edge like a waterfall, but I don't care. Rachel, Miss Price says, she says it like she's getting mad. You put that sweater on right now and no more nonsense. But it's not now, Miss Price says. This is when I wish I was a, I wasn't 11, because all those years inside of me, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, are pushing at the back of my eyes when I put one arm through one sleeve of the sweater that smells like cottage cheese, and then the other arm through the other and stand there with my arms apart like if the sweater hurts me, and it does, all itchy and full of germs that aren't even mine. That's when everything I've been holding in since this morning, since when Miss Price put the sweater on my desk, finally lets go, and all of a sudden I'm crying in front of everybody. I wish I was invisible, but I'm not. I'm 11, and it's my birthday today, and I'm crying like I'm three in front of everybody. I put my head down on the desk and bury my face in my stupid clown sweater arms. My face all hot and spit coming out of my mouth because I can't stop the little animal noises coming from coming out of me until there aren't any more tears left in my eyes. And it's just my body shaking like when you have the hiccups and my whole head hurts like when you drink milk too fast. But the worst part is right before the bell rings for lunch, that stupid Phyllis Lopez, who is even dumber than Sylvia Saldiva, says that she remembers the red sweater is hers. I take it off right away and give it to her, only Miss Price pretends like everything's okay. Today I'm 11. There's a cake Mama's making for tonight, and when Papa comes home from work, we'll eat it. There will be candles and presents, and everyone will sing happy birthday, happy birthday to you, Rachel. Only it's too late. I'm 11 today. I'm 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. But I wish I was 102. I wish I was anything but 11. Because I want today to be far away already. Far away like a runaway balloon, like a tiny O in the sky, so tiny, tiny you have to close your eyes to see it. So, thinking about this story, um, to summarize, it's, it's about a girl, obviously, who is named Rachel. 
right? She's the narrator. She's the one telling the story who is given a sweater at work or at her school by her teacher who thinks it belongs to her. And Rachel, the narrator, feels extremely embarrassed, right? That this sweater is basically being forced upon her. But she doesn't know how to say it uh, out loud to her teacher that it, that it doesn't belong to her. So obviously the struggle, the conflict in this story is not external, but it's actually inside of her. It's an internal conflict she has with herself, uh, right? And being unable to express her feelings. So now that we finished reading the story, if you want to pause the video, go back to the PowerPoint and respond to the question from week two, which is here. Why does a narrator say it's too late at the end of line, at the end of the story on line 91? So why does the narrator say it's too late? So that's a question I, I want you guys to think about. It's going to be right here and respond to that. Go ahead and pause the video right now. Go back and enter your response, please. Okay, now that you guys have finished responding to the text, uh, to that question in the PowerPoint, let's go back to our assignment for the week. So after we read the short story, we're gonna look at character traits. So looking at this, as you read the short story, think about the other two characters, both major and minor, and think about how their personalities affect the narrator of the story. So you're gonna click on here, and this is gonna be our homework for the week. So let's look at this assignment. Character, what's a character? Character are the people, animals, or imaginary creatures that take part in the action of the story. So every story has major and minor characters. A major character is usually the focus of the action in the story and is most important. So this is who the story revolves around. Um, in a personal narrative, it's obviously gonna be around one individual who's telling their story. There may be one or more minor characters who interact with the main character and that's what we're gonna look at today. So, continuing, you can learn about the personalities of story characters by looking at their traits or, or qualities. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna pay attention to these things right here. When we looked at a character, and this is true in any story, book, movie that you watch, show, Think about the character's actions, thoughts, and feelings. Um, what they say, think, or how they interact with the other characters, or maybe the description of their appearance, right? So let's look at this. We're gonna focus on two characters, which is Rachel and Miss Price. Uh, Rachel is the narrator, correct? And Miss Price, is her teacher. So what we're gonna do is in this box, if you can see in this row, we're gonna write a trait. In this box, we're gonna write evidence. So one of the traits that Rachel experiences, if we think back to the story, is think about when she's given the sweater in the first, uh, at the beginning of class. What's, what's something that she feels? She feels shy, right? She's unable to express herself. Um, she doesn't know how to respond. So that could be one of her character traits. So if we go back to the story, now we need to find evidence. And that's what we're gonna include here. Let's find evidence of her feeling shy, right? So if we go back, um, 
Let's see, where can we go back? Okay, let's go right here. Line 37 through 39. Um, Miss Price takes the sweater and puts it right on my desk, but when I open my mouth, nothing comes out. So we're going to copy that. Now paste it here. Whoops. So we'll do go to edit, paste without formatting. It's going to copy page number, so we're going to delete these. We don't need them, right? All we need is the quote. Um, this is italicized, so let's turn that off. So we're going to we're going to put this in quotations, right? Because this is a quote from the text. Parentheses, we're going to put the line number. Uh, actually, in two lines, right? Uh, three, actually. 37 to 39. So, that, parentheses. And after you copy your text, go ahead and include one sentence that explains your response. And how does this, how does this quote uh, demonstrate her character trait of feeling shy in this moment. Uh, Rachel Okay, so what I did is I copied the quote. So you will find evidence. You can copy it here. You will include the lines in parentheses. Then you'll respond to that quote, right? Uh, so the character trait is shy. The evidence, quote, Miss Price takes the sweater and puts it right on my desk. But when I open my mouth, nothing comes out. What does this evidence show? This evidence could show that Rachel is unable to respond and tell Miss Price the truth because she feels too shy at this moment. Rachel is probably someone who keeps to herself and possibly doesn't have many friends. I think we can make that inference from this text. Uh, now, she may have a lot of friends, but my guess, uh, based on what we've read, is she may not. She doesn't seem to be very outspoken, which is why I was able to make that inference below. Okay, so I will keep this example here for you guys. So you should only be required to find two more character traits for Rachel, and you will type that information in these two boxes and explain in the bottom box below. Also, we're going to look at Miss Price. So find me character trait it's for her. You'll include those here, and you'll type the evidence in each box. OK? So go ahead and finish this assignment. When you are ready to turn it in, you will just click on there will be a box here uh, after you edit the document that will say turn in assignment okay all right that should be it for you guys if you have any questions please feel free to email me or send me a google hangout message uh, i really enjoy this story and i hope you guys did as well uh, if you have any questions please let me know y'all have a wonderful week and 
I will see you guys in our next video. Bye-bye.